Alrighty guys, so continuing on with the next portion in the setup series. We are going to be completing the whole front end, which means installing the main rotor, getting our pitch, um, our servo limits, and everything else all completed. Also, our travel limits for swash plate. Um, I just want to do a quick recap to make sure we're all on the same page. At this stage, you should have, let's go from the, from the, from the base up here, all your servo frequencies should be set accordingly. Um, all of your mixing and servo directions should be correct, meaning... The swash plate should travel collective correctly, um, forward, backwards, right, and left. Um, also, you should have a completely level swash plate throughout the whole duration of travel. Very important. And last but not least, the gyro correction directions should be optimal, meaning if you tilt the heli forward, it goes back. If you go right, it goes left. Uh, so forth and so on for that. So as long as you're at this stage, we'll go ahead. What I'm going to do is you are going to need a digital pitch gauge. I'm using my RC logger, so get that out, get it ready. Um, I'm going to get my main rotor installed and get my linkages all um, connected here. And I'm going to set them up per the manual. Um, at this time, I still have not connected my rudder. I like to do the front end setup all the way and then we'll just jump back in because the rudder only has like two different menus. So if you're comfortable enough with the system at this point, just jump in and do the do the rudder. Um, but I have a lot of really good key key features and tips and tricks and stuff for the rudder. So that'll be done in the in the very last video. So let me go ahead and get everything installed uh, for my main rotor and let's go ahead and get the front end all set up. Alright guys, so I went ahead and got my, my main rotor installed. I set up my linkages here per the manual. This does have the, the mixing base here, and it's just got uh, prefixed arms. So, what I'm going to do is I went ahead and powered up the system. What we need to do is find out if our swash plate itself is in the center of travel um, for the mixing and the, the blade pitch. So, all I'm going to do is boot up the system. Right now, we're just in normal, you know, this would be like what we fly in. So I'm going to jump back in to the setup menu. Okay, again, we'll wait for the flashing status light. Um, and once we do, we'll let go. And I'm going to jump back into menu G first. And that's going to allow me just to check where the swash plate uh, center's at. So let's let's go ahead and do this. Let's go, or I'm sorry, we'll wait for it to turn solid. Sorry, it's a little shaky on my one hand here. And let's jump into G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now remember, in menu G... It has the, the section where it gives you the default. And like we talked about, you have to always have a servo selected to make sure you're getting the right readout. So I'm going to select the very last servo. So it means I'm going to go rudder one, two, three. And again, it's very important to note that you do not exit this menu ever with it on the stationary spot, right? You always have to have at least one servo selected. I always do the third one. So one, two, three. Three. Now you can push the set button if you need to, but let's check our neutral position here. So we know that we 90'd our servos. These are factory defaulted to the specified length. That does not mean that we won't have to adjust them. That's just what we did as our base point. So what we're looking for is we know a couple of things here. We know that our swash plate is not only level, but it travels level. So in theory, what that means is if I have to adjust any of these three linkages, as long as I do so in equal amounts, the swash plate should remain true, okay? Now with these turnbuckle style links where they have a right thread and a left thread are really nice for fine tuning, but we might end up doing a couple of just, you know, disconnects and, and, and two turns to kind of figure out where we need to be, and then we could fine tune. Now let's take us a look. Um, mixing base is where we're gonna look first. You can obviously, obviously tell that that is not 90 degree, so our swash is sitting a little bit low, what that means. And then when we look up here, it's kind of nice some of these newer heads have these little indicators. Um, you can tell that my center position is off, so I need to actually come up on the swash plate a little bit. So uh, remember guys, we're always working from the ground up, so we're going to move from here to here to here. Sometimes we've got to go back down here. To get this right. Once this is right, then we'll work our way up to here. And you know, again, we might have to come back down. But that's what we want to do. So we want to go one one layer at a time. So at this point, I'm gonna say we're maybe about one to two turns out. So I'm gonna take 
um, each one of these swash plate links and I'm going to give them equal amounts of turns out on each end until I get this mixing base to be level. Um, what I'm going to do after that guys is I'm going to remove the main rotor again. Now that we've adjusted these linkages I want to make sure by fine tuning these that we have them at the exact um, the uh, the exact lengths because I want them to all be equal because for example if I go like two turns out on this one and one turn out on that one and and had turn and a half on that one or whatever my swash or this this mixing base might now be level however my swash travel might now be off because based on how we 90 our servos here we 90 them in a manner that all of these links at their current length travel equal and that's that we have to keep that they have to travel equal at all times okay so let me get that step done quick recap okay we're in menu G right now I'm gonna adjust my linkages on the swash until this is at 90 and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the main rotor and put my leveling tool back on and make any fine-tuning adjustments needed and then recheck in menu K for your travel and then I'll put the main rotor back on and we'll come back and move on to up here, okay? So let's go ahead and get that step done, guys, and we'll come back and continue on. Alrighty, guys, so I've went ahead and I've completed those steps as we just talked about. So same thing, I've done a reboot on the radio, a reboot on the model. Let's go ahead and let's double check everything. It turned out, well here, let's jump into programming first here. So again, we'll bypass blinking, get into solid, let go, got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is our neutral point, don't worry about it. Come over here, select one, two, three. And um, it turns out that I ended up going, gosh, what was I think it was four turns, four turns on each link. And then again, you can see now that that mixing base, trying to make it look as level as I can on camera. I know it can be hard with the angles, but I mean, you can tell if you look at it like this even, from like about here, you can tell it makes a nice good square box. Um, it is level, I, I have different methods and, and, and nerdy ways of checking it, but it's as close as it's gonna get. Now, I did remove the main rotor after. Again, I put a swash leveling tool on and I fine tuned all of these uh, turnbuckle links to where my swash was perfectly level, rechecked its full travel, got the main rotor reinstalled. So, now we've got the mixing base done, let's move upwards. Um, a lot of machines nowadays have this, which is kind of cool. It's, it's kind of like a little engraving or an indicator that helps you to see how close to zero degrees of pitch you are. And I'm pretty dang close. The nice thing is, again, I've got a turnbuckle links. I'll literally just be able to tweak those to get myself at uh, neutral or zero degrees of pitch. So let me throw at this at this point, guys, if you're at this this stage and everything is as as we're talking about together, I'm going to throw on my main blades and we're going to start to do the, the neutral position, our positive and negative end range, and then we'll take a look at the full travel mixing and also the, uh, the cyclic degrees as well. Please, please note, if you're putting main blades on and you have an ESC connected to a motor and you have a main gear and everything installed, make sure in some way, shape or form it is disabled, whether it be you unplugging your motor wires or disabling throttle in here you do not want this thing to spool up on you while you're while you're playing around so let me get some blades on this bad boy and let's uh, let's let's wrap this up okay guys so now at this point you can tell um, I've gotten my pitch gauge out and what I did is I zeroed my pitch gauge to the top of my main rotor um, you can see that it's teeter-tottering a little bit between that zero and one I mean, these things, especially the RC logger, it is sensitive. So if I can get it that close, I'm usually pretty happy about it. Um, I, I can never get it to just stay flat zero. I feel like even like the vibrations from my voice, you know, make it change pitch somehow. So I, anyways, I, I zeroed it out. You can use the top of your motor. You can use uh, some level spots on your frame, whatever you want to do. And then I've got my pitch readout device here, which is magnetic. So I can just take this and stick it on. Okay. So what we're going to do real fast is, is uh, let me provide power to the helicopter. And we're, what we're going to want to do first is we're going to jump into our menu G. And we're going to try to check for neutral on the helicopter or zero degrees of pitch. Okay, so let me get this plugged in here. 
let it do its little song and dance. This is always hard with the 700 too, because on the bench it's, it's just so big, the blades are hefty, so. And hopefully if we did our programming and our linkages and everything correctly, at least per the manual as close as possible, our goal is to try to end up with minimal adjustments on the linkages. In some cases, maybe we even got it spot on. I mean, we'll find out here real soon. So I'm gonna go ahead, guys, and get into Setup Menu. We're gonna go to Menu G again. So wait for a solid light. Go ahead and release. We got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Again, do not forget, you've got your neutral point. Select one of the three servos. I always just go to the third, so I'm gonna go rudder one, two, three. And let's check everything. It's pretty dang close to zero, so, so let me let me recheck my block here. You can see my pitch gauge here is still getting the same readout. We're still getting that teetering one, negative one to zero. So I know we're good. So let's take this now and let's let's go ahead and set it over here. Now when you take your pitch reads at, uh, readouts on your blades, guys, try to get as close to the core as you can because blades tend to flex and bow a little bit as they get heavier towards the ends. So I usually come in to about, about right there. And just let, let's go ahead and take our first readout and let's just kind of see where we're at. So this will be our neutral position. This is where we want to get zero degrees of pitch. Uh, I'm reading a negative 1.6. So that is not too bad at all. That means uh, Uncle Freddy knows a little bit about programming the Beast X because I'm not, you know, five to six degrees off or something. So the nice thing again with these turnbuckle style links, guys, is all I have to do, and it's on the other side, so let me see if I can. Let me jump over here. Let's try, I'm gonna try to do this one on camera with you. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my linkage. Um, since I'm in a negative, that's gonna mean that my leading edge needs to come up. In order for my leading edge to come up, I'm gonna need to lengthen my link. And with the turnbuckle, I should be able to just turn it. Um, let's see, so right here. So let's try just giving this a little bit of a turn. Oh, nope, popped off the whole link. <laughs> Hang on. So actually, now that I have, it popped off my link, sorry guys. So now that I have the link off, what I'll do, is let's just give it let's just give it one turn and see where that puts us. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a manual turn. To be fair, these ones are really high quality, so they're pretty dang tight. I think usually the turnbuckle comes in a little more handy when the links are a little looser. So, anyways, ah, pop that back on. Pop that one back on. And you want to try, when you're doing this, guys, try to make sure you're in line with the boom uh, as close as possible. And then since I just made that small adjustment, I'm going to go ahead real fast and, and cycle the system again. So I'm going to go neutral. One, two, three. And let's get us a readout. Ooh. So now hopefully you guys can see that. We're at a negative... Oh. 0.8, 0 0.8. That means we are so close to zero that it's basically a zero to the naked eye. But we're striving for perfection. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find a way to twist this turnbuckle. Let's see. Let me if I hold the link on a little bit. Bear with me there, guys. I want to try to do this one on camera with you so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about as I'm doing this. So let's go ahead, I'm going to lengthen this one. Let's turn, dang it. There we go. Okay, so I got to turn a little bit more. Oh, link keeps popping off on me. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's see what that did. I don't know if that actually did anything or not, but... Ah. Okay, snap that back on. Let's get our blades lined back up. And let's recycle. What do we got? Son of a gun, that didn't do a damn thing. So let me do this, guys, so that the, the video is not too lengthy. Let me adjust my linkages real quick. I'm going to play with these turnbuckles and see if I can get it to budge. But essentially, in theory, just to make this easy for you guys, at this point is where you would just adjust this linkage uh, up or down until you get that zero degree readout. 
If you've got turnbuckles, give them that fine tuning and try to get this at a dead zero. Now, if my end result is teetering between a zero and negative 0 0.1 like my main block was, I'm going to leave it right there because at least they match. And then once you get that done, what I want you guys to do is rotate uh, the main rotor 180 degrees and do the exact same thing for the other blade um, in the same position. Get them to where they both read the exact same pitch value. Um, once that is done, we can progress past menu G. So let me complete my setup and we'll come back and do a quick recap on it. Okay guys, uh, coming back here, quick recap. So I got everything done. Again, the turnbuckles were just kind of being a little bit of a pain for me. Um, but I went ahead and got them adjusted. As you can see here, my pitch is doing that little teeter-totter from zero to negative one that matches the uh, position in which I zeroed out my pitch gauge. So I'm not in any way, shape, or form unhappy with that. Um, and again, most main rotors nowadays, at least some of the higher-end models, they have notches that'll show you. And you can see visibly that, that mine are at zero. My pitch gauge has given me that information as well as it bounces between, you know, that zero and one. And, you know, again, the funny part is they do that. I mean, digital pitch gauges are kind of weird that way. But, I mean, I can take this back. Let's set this back on our block. And you'll see we're getting that same readout. Well, now it's going to be stubborn and stay at dead zero. So that kind of makes me look like a fool. But anyways, guys, it's it's so minute. Honestly, you're never going to see it, um, any bad characteristics from the system when it's that close. I mean, if I really wanted to, which I probably will, I'll probably tweak that ever so slightly just to get it 100% even. Um, but just know that little tiny variance, guys, don't stress over it. Don't lose sleep over it. You're perfectly fine. So I just want to do a quick recap on that. I'm going to do the other blade and get that one equal, and then when we come back, we'll finish up with doing, uh, doing the collective range, um, and then we've got to do the six degrees as requested for the cyclic, and then we'll do our travel limits, and then our front end setup in the um, parameters that we're going through currently will be all completed. So let me get that done, guys. Let's come back. We'll continue on. Okay, guys, so I've got both blades completely done. As you can see on the pitch readout, I went through and really fine-tuned it. I've got a, a perfect flat zero. Every once in a while it might teeter, but I think, again, that's just due to subtle vibrations and movements. We got zero off the main rotor block, got zero on the other blade. Both are identical. This should eliminate the need for any blade tracking. I mean, if both blades with centripetal force throwing the blade straight, as long as they're not too tight, and they both track and read a zero and zero, there's no reason why the blade shouldn't spin and make you a nice flat disc. If you do have any high-speed vibrations and things like that from blade tracking, it could be due to the fact that maybe you have uh, a less than identical set of blades, maybe a warped blade or something. But mine is pretty damn spot on. So I'm going to do one last cycle. Um, again, I'm still in menu G, so here's neutral. This is where we would put on the servo arms and everything. That gives me about a 1.4. You can see the difference. Now, once I select one servo, I'm going to do it three times, but here's servo one. We get a zero. Now we get a, a, a 0.1, but servo two, same readout. Servo three, same readout. Uh, back to zero. So now that we have a servo selected, a third servo in, in, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and, and move on to the next menu. Now we've already done menu H, we've done menu I, we've done, we need to jump into menu J, okay, so uh, we're on G, here we go, we're going to go H, I, J, okay. Now, um, if you need the reference back to the, uh, the programming sheet, you'll see that in menu J, with the aileron stick, we want to adjust 6 degrees of cyclic pitch on the roll axis. That'll be with the blades aligned. Now again, we're at zero degrees, so we know our setup is correct. We're gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna do right aileron, right? Let's go ahead and, um, or we could do left, left or right, I don't really think it matters. Um, let's go, we'll go left, I'm gonna go left aileron, okay? We're gonna start to adjust, well that's negative, so actually let's go positive. So I'm gonna go to the right, slowly adjust this. And you'll notice again, as you start to move, like we talked about earlier, as you start to move, the light on your beast X is going to start to change and it's going to go through a progressional series of colors from off to violet to red and to blue. Now we want to try to land in blue. That's going to be our optimal setting. So here we go. We're 
We're in blue and we're only at five degrees right now. So boom, right? That's that's thumbs up. I don't know how to get my thumb in there. Boom, right? So this is good news. So we're at 5.2. Let's keep going. Wiggle it about. Oop, there's six. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over just a little and then back it down. Okay, that's about a 6.1. Okay, so there's 6.2, so we know we're over. And I'm going to back it off just a little. Again, guys, I'm so picky with my setups, but it makes a huge difference when you fly. The, the more perfect this is, the, the, um, the better your results will be and the more enjoyment you're going to get out of your machine. So I'm not touching anything. It's staying... Let's see. Come on. Try to get to stay right on six here. And again, that little point one teeter totter thing, it, it's, it's not anything to lose sleep over. You're going to be just fine. So I'm going to leave it right there. I'm getting a good solid six degrees. I am in the blue. And again, like we talked about earlier, guys, if for any reason you happen to be just teeter-tottering from the blue so you're just in the red but if you go to like a 6.2 or a 6.3 now you're in the blue just leave it in red you're totally fine what you want this this is more important than the color on your beast x system okay so make sure you guys understand six degrees in menu j adjusting the aileron sticks pretty simple pretty basic okay and then just leave everything alone now we're going to jump into menu k we're going to save this one. I do highly suggest that you take your transmitter and put your collective stick at half. That way you can avoid any you know big jumps or anything here. But we're going to jump into K. Now if I did everything right if, and I go into my transmitter I go 50 in, 50 out here. I'm going to jump into menu K. Should put me at zero degrees of pitch or that little bit of a point one, which you guys can see. Everything lines up. Everything adds up. How simple is programming a helicopter once you understand it, right? Um, this one's going to allow us to do our positive and negative for collective. I'm going to go with a 12.5 because this is kind of more of a, of a competition-like machine, really nice. So let's go positive first. And holy heck, we are at a 17 degrees of pitch, so that'll probably blow the main rotor right off. Let's go ahead and back that down. So just move your rudder stick left or right as needed. I was way high up there on my pitch. And again, mine's got little notches on it, too, to help tell me where I'm at. But I'm going to go 12.5 on positive. Right. Go right there. That looks good. Give me a 12.5, as you guys can see uh, indicated here. Um, yeah, that looks pretty sweet. So 12.5 there. And let's go ahead and go. You'll notice that it saves on the Beast X, too. It'll do a little song and dance, and it'll flash. Now let's go full negative. Ooh, I was a little closer there. I was at 12.9. So same thing. Let's back it off a little bit. Sorry for the silence too, guys. This takes a little bit of, of my focus in here. Now you guys, you got to barely kiss that stick sometimes. Just a quick, quick little peck, and it'll get you right where you need to be. Um. That one's teetering. There we go. That's That's got to be it right there. Come on, monster. There it is. Okay. So 12.5 there. I'm looking at my marks just as a visual indication. Everything looks good. Uh, if your machine has those, of course. But let's do a double check here. So we got negative 12.5 in menu K. And we now have a positive... Yeah, it's doing the teeter on me again, so let's give it... That's why it's good to go back and forth, guys. You want to make sure you're, you're, you're double-checking these. Now let's raise it up just a little. I want to try to get these numbers to read identical each time. Okay, there's my 12.5. Let's go down. Twelve five. Okay, let's try that one more time. Negative twelve point five. Negative twelve point five. And it teeters on the point five and point four, so I'm happy with that. And it teeters on the point four and point five. I'm happy with that too. And at any time, I can return back to center, which would be fifty in, fifty out on the transmitter. And I've got a zero degree. Look at that, guys. Look how cool that is. And look how simple.
the beach deck system can be. I mean, that is that is about as good as it gets right there. Um, the very next menu to go into is going to be our menu L, which we'll go ahead and save these settings. Um, and this one's basically just going to be our cyclic limit. Let me get a quick reposition on the camera real fast, and let's go through this menu. So I clicked into menu L, and let's go ahead and move forward with that. Okay, guys, so in menu L, um, it's going to be pretty similar. What we're going to want to do is play with the aileron elevator and pitch access, and we're going to use the rudder to increase or decrease the limits. Now, here's what I prefer to do um, to make sure everything's great. So we know that we can't go above uh, 12.5 um, on my collective, both positive and negative, right? So what I do is I just lower my rudder stick down all the way, and then I'm just going to do a full four-point stir on the stick, right? He, basically, I'm just looking for each corner, more or less. But as I, as I observe the machine and how everything interacts, I'm actually going to back this off quite a bit. Oh, that's way too much. There we go. I'm going to back it off all the way to where the light is off. As you guys can see, see how it starts to turn on. So I'm going to back it all the way off because I don't want to bind or break anything. So if I give full top right corner, steady out my camera here, sorry guys, full top right, I don't really get that much movement um, out of the servo there. Now if I start to, you know, if I go down, bottom left, bottom right, what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that things like this, the ball, you know, when I max out my servos, it's not hitting any parts. I want to make sure it's not binding, hitting any servo cases. You want to, you closely observe the swash plate, make sure it's not interacting with the bottom frame or anything. So basically what I do, and it's hard to do with just one hand, but I'll just hold, let's say we hold down bottom right, and I'll increase or decrease my limit until I find the spot where it starts to bind or interact, and then I'll back it off a couple, a couple notches. And then that should give us our limit setting. So let me do mine real quick, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, so to wrap things up here, menu L has been completed. I'm still in it. I did end up on a solid blue. And a good way to check, and again, as long as your parts aren't interacting or binding, of course, but a good way to check is also what kind of a, a cyclic pitch range you're looking at. Um, so right now, I'm at neutral, 50 and 50 out. We've got our zero degrees of pitch. Now, if I just do my right aileron about 10.5 10.4 is what I'll have for my overall cyclic throw but at no point during my full travels do I experience any interacting or binding with any of the parts of the machine so that's the important part once you have that set guys go ahead and exit menu L which again we've already went through M sensory direction and N which was Piro Optimization. We did that in the last video, so go ahead and exit programming. And then what we're going to do is let's do one last final check. Now, this would be your actual flying mode. This is where gyros are active. Sometimes on the bench, the uh, swash can behave a little odd because it's trying to counterbalance and sense things. But let's just go ahead and check our, our overall setups, and let's just see if we kind of got where we needed to be. So right now I am collective, full low. And we have, look at that, negative 12.5. Okay, let's go ahead and let's see if we can bring her up to 50 in, 50 out. Right there, should be at a zero. Hot dang it, yes we are. And last but not least, let's see if we nailed that 12.5 at the top. Closing up, yep, there it is, 12.5. So there you go, guys. That's going to be, as far as the Beast X is concerned, um, for the front end setup, that is going to take you through the entire setup menu, which is the solid LED on the Beast X. Now, the heli's not quite ready to fly yet. We still have to go ahead and install our tail servo and do our tail linkage, which I'm going to make a video for just the tail, because i got a lot of topics to go over on the tail. Um, again, if you're comfortable enough to complete it, feel free to do so. Um, but I'm going to make a video for it anyways. And then, last but not least, after everything there has been completed... What we'll do, um, we'll probably do it at the end of the tail video, or I might just do it as a separate, but we're going to be doing an entire video series um, explaining the parameter menus, which is going to be that blinking status. 
you're going to want to go through those before you do your initial flights because it's going to do the behavior controls of the system. So keep following along, guys, as we progress through the series. But at this point in time, your front end uh, mechanics and programming should all be complete. And your helicopter, if you guys followed all of this correctly, should be absolutely perfect and ready to go. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. And remember, my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you.